Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. This is Isaiah 9a, <coughs> the beginning of chapter 9 of Yeshayahu, Isaiah. <coughs> I am Saul Weiner, your host. For those that have been following with us, we had at the end of chapter 8, the people of, of Judah were wallowing in darkness, looking to all of the wrong places for help. They feared the Assyrian onslaught that was to come, and they feared the two kings of Aram of, and, and the northern kingdom of Israel that were also attacking Judah. The questions were, do we join the two kingdoms of, of Aram and Israel? The masses were saying, let us abandon the house of David. That's what they were saying as they were asking their sorcerers and soothsayers for signs and advice. And all they see is darkness and destruction because they are ignoring God. Or do we turn to Assyria? Let's capitulate to them as King Ahaz has. <clears throat> as King Ahaz has. The voice of Yeshayahu is being ignored by the leaders and their loud ones. Only the humble, the poor, and the faithful young women and children. The faithful Talmudai, the students of Yeshayahu, are those that are saying, Do not fear. <clears throat> Don't fear Assyria. Don't fear the northern kingdom <clears throat> in Aram. Rather, look to the light of God. Those two kingdoms will be destroyed. Assyria will not be successful in cutting off the house of David. We will survive this onslaught. In this atmosphere, Yeshayahu prophesizes the ultimate redemption of Yehuda and the destruction of Assyria that will come in the days of King Hezekiah of Hezekiah. At this time, at the time that he was stating this prophecy, Hezekiah <coughs> was a young boy. We know that he was nine years old when his father, Ahaz, the evil king, was appointed king. He was then 25 years old, that 16 years later, when he took over the kingship from his father, Ahaz, who ruled for 16 years. Chizkiyahu, as we know, resisted the dominion of Assyria and was faithful to God. And under Chizkiyahu, the Assyrians destroyed much of Yehuda. They laid siege to Yerushalayim, but ultimately, miraculously, their armies were destroyed on Passover, on Pesach night. They retreated back to Assyria, leaving Chizkiyahu as king and free to rule Yehuda, Judah independently with a new dedication to God. So at this time, Chizkiyahu was already born, and clearly, the special relationship that we know that occurred between Chizkiyahu and Yeshayahu, between Hezekiah and Isaiah, had already begun. Not only were they cousins, Chizkiyahu was a faithful disciple of Isaiah. Hezekiah was a faithful disciple of Yeshayahu and loyal to God. So here are the words of Yeshayahu, verse 1. The people of Yehuda that are wandering in the dark will see a great light. <coughs> Those that are living in the land of the shadows of death, the rays of light shall shine through and reach them. They're wandering in the dark, suffering the onslaught of Assyria, but don't worry. <coughs> Miracles will happen. Light will shine. You have made great that nation, and you have given him great joy. They have rejoiced like the happiness of people celebrating a bountiful harvest, just as victors rejoice over their spoils as they divide them up. Why? For the yoke of Assyria has been broken. Remember, this is Yeshayahu prophesizing and envisioning the rejoicing that is to come. So he's speaking of it in past tense as if it has already happened, because he is seeing this vision. And the rod of the one who is beating them, the yoke of their overlords, lords, <coughs> you smashed it like the days when their enemy's Midian was smashed. This is a reference to the victory of the Israelites over their oppressors, the Midianites, that happened during the days of the judges. Gichol se'on so'ein birash v'simlo migol alavidomim. All of those boots of war that the enemy soldiers put on when they came to attack you. All of those garments of armor and uniforms of war that they dressed themselves up in when they came to kill you. All have been smashed and burned in flames. <coughs> all destroyed by God. For a child has been born to us. There is a, there is a son who has been given to us. And the rulership, the leadership will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Pele Yoetz El Gibor Avi Adzar Shalom. For as you know, says Yeshayahu, there already is a young boy in the house of David 
who is one of those children that I spoke to you about earlier, Yeshayahu says. One who knows that Immanuel, that, that what makes the Jewish people special is our relationship with God. That understands that this is the message of the Jewish people to the rest of the world. That we will be faithful to God and not be afraid of the powers of the world that try to squash and crush our mission. This young man, <coughs> Chizkiyahu, will take over the kingship from his father Ahaz, who so weakly submitted to the Assyrians. And the leadership, the kingship will be given to him, not anymore to his weak father. He will be called Pele Yoetz El Gibar. The El Gibar, the powerful God, will be Pele Yoetz, will be the one who gives wondrous plans and advice. Avi'ad, the eternal father, God will be the one who, who, um, who gives, who, 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 to whom we look to for, 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 for strength, as opposed to being afraid of the, of the human kingdoms that appear to be powerful. He, this new ruler, will be Sar Shalom, the prince of peace. Because only by having faith in God and being faithful to our mission will he finally restore peace to the kingdom by being faithful. Limar be hamisra ula shalom in kates. This ruler will increase the peace and rulership in a way that will never end. Here Yeshayahu is predicting that the peace of Chizkiyahu will be one that has no end. As we know due to human failings it was not exactly to be, but it could have been. Had the next phrase been kept properly, which is, Al Kisei David Machto, he will sit upon the throne of David and, and upon his kingship and um, the house of David. Lahachino Saul Sada to prepare it, to set it, and to support it with what? With the things that will make it last forever. Bimishpat Uvitstaka, with justice and righteousness. Me'atav Olam, that is what makes the kingdom of David, the house of David, last from now and forever. <coughs> this will only happen, this will happen because of the anger of God who comes to destroy his enemies. Again, Yeshayahu is driving home the point that what establishes the kingship forever in any kingdom, especially the house of David, Mishpat Utzdaka. Again, that theme that Yeshayahu has been pounding in to our minds since the beginning of this of his book. The Mishpat Utzdaka, with justice and righteousness, that will bring about the kingship that will last in Kates forever. May Olam, from now and forever. Thank you so much for listening to Podcast 9A. Looking forward to continuing the study of Chapter 9 with you in our next podcast.